Right. We shall start. Cold yet? No. Six minutes to go yet, Control. Can you speak up, please? Uh, city removers here. Uh, I believe you wanted an estimate. You're always welcome. You did exactly what I told you, talk to nobody. Remember, Jim, trust no one. No one. You worked me alone. I'm sorry, there's no vodka. I didn't expect any. I've got a job for you. Familiar territory, Czechoslovakia. Perhaps a bit too familiar. Which identity do you want to use? I'd suggest Vladimir Hayek. Still a Czech journalist? Yes. Still based in Paris? Yes. Has anyone else used him? No. Do you agree? I think it's a... I've had an offer of service, Jim. On the military side. His cover name is Testify. You're a military-minded chap. Two of you should hit it off pretty well. He's fond of horses, too. Something else you've got in common. We can chat polo, I suppose, though. His real name is Stefcek. At the moment, he's an artillery general, but... In the past, he's worked in close liaison with Russian intelligence. Very close. And now he wants to talk to us. I have, personally, interviewed an intermediary in Austria. Stefcek now wants to testify to a ranking officer of mine who can speak Czech. Why? There was a girlfriend, student, 20 years difference between them. Such things happen. 
She was shot during the uprising of 68. Sevchek never forgave the Russians for it. He's been after their blood ever since, laying low, stayed friendly. All the time he's been waiting his chance. Now he's ready. How sure are you? Step check. Rocketry. Ballistics. Fourth man in Czech Army Intelligence. Secretary of the National Internal Security Committee. Anglo-American desk in Prague. He's big, Jim. And he's got treasure for us. He's worked for Moscow Center's England section. And he's going to give us the name of the agent Moscow planted inside our setup. We have a mole, Jim. London. Very near the top. In the circus? One of the top five. Their code name for him is Gerald. We have a rotten apple, Jim. And the maggots are eating up the circus. These people, one of these. Why not? Are the British incapable of deception? We've turned enough members of other outfits, Russians, Poles, Czechs, even the odd American. Why shouldn't there be a mole in the circus? Now, look at them. No control, I know who they are. Listen, Jim, we've got to have code names for them. Do you remember the nursery rhyme, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Sailor? Finish it. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Percy Alanine, Director of Operations, Tinker. Tinker. Bill Hayden, Head of Personnel, Taylor. Roy Bland, Head of Iron Curtain Networks, Soldier. We leave out sailor, too much like Taylor could be misheard. Rich man. Don't like it. Sounds like police work, fraud, Swiss bank stuff. Toby Esterhazy, top lamplighter, our exquisite head sleuth. Poor man, <laughs> yes. Poor man. And George Smiley, my devoted deputy, beggar man. Have you got it? I'll remember. All I want from you, Jim, is one. One word, just the one code name. If you have to scrawl it on the front door of the embassy in Prago, phone our resident Hood and shout it in his ear before you go underground. If there's some kind of a fumble and that should be necessary, just give me that one word. But remember, Jim, if you're caught, deny me. I don't know you're there. Where do I meet Stefchek? How? When? On Friday, March 20th, Stefchek will be inspecting the weapon research station at Tishnov, near Brno. It's about 100 miles north of the Austrian border. From there, he'll be visiting a hunting lodge for the weekend alone. It's a place high up in the forest, not far from Rachitze. He'll provide you with an escort from Brno. And he expects you on the evening of Saturday March 21st. Hmm. What does, uh, what does he get from us? Usual assurances, if and when he wants to come, we'll look after him. One word will do it, Jim. I'm almost there. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. 
Nezdržujte to, prosím vás, najděte si ty klíče, to máte mít připravené. Jste tady za obodem, pane Heku? No doufám, že taky za zábovou. Vy Francii nevaří deobré pivo.
No jde to, ale doktor mi řekl, že nesmím řídit jen než tři hodiny. Hody v žety. Ne, máte sedět se mnou vepředu, je to bezpečnější. Co ty dají jo? A taky demokratičnější. Hody v žety. Máte pistoli? Hody v žety. Máte zprávu pro generála? Teda jedna ženská je jako divá za chlapama. A když stojí za nima ve frontě, tak jim šahá ze zadu na koule. To a jednou zrovna taky začalo pršet. Nehybejte se a nemluvte. Vylezte, baraku. A malu. Dej si to na sebe. Ty chatě, budu za generálem, až se jí vrátíš, až tu budu bezpečné. Proč? Já vím, že to je bezpečné. Chci, kdybych rozvítil, mohl by tě snadno dostat. Ale ti, ti, ti.
Миша какой? Ну, Денис, переверни к его на спину. Да что переворачивать? Холодно он уже? Ну, значит, под собой. Barabbas was a bookseller. Mr. Smiley, please. You're making an investment. I hope you'll remember that the day I sell it back to you. It's always a pleasure to do business with you, sir. You always have a joke for me. I think, after all, we could trust this to the post office. Yes, sir. I'll send it on, Mr. Smiley. I'll slip out that way, if you don't mind. At all, sir. Maestro himself. Don't say you've forgotten me. Hello, Roddy. Nice to see you. How marvellous to run into you. They told me you were locked up with the monks in St. Gallen or somewhere, poring over manuscripts. Self-exile, they said. Of course, I knew that wasn't true, because I know you, George. <laughs> You'd never leave England. You're just not capable of such an act of abandonment, no matter how shabbily the circus treated you. So... What have you been doing all these months? I want to know everything, every little bit. How's the delectable wife? How is the lovely Lady Anne? Not in town at the moment, I hear. Pound to a penny you're shopping for her. Little presents all the time, they tell me. Going away gifts, coming home gifts. Are you back on the beat, George? Or did you never really chuck it in? Is that it, George? Has it all been cover? Cover, George? Roddy, I've retired. All right, George, if you say so. You look well, Roddy, but I mustn't delay. Oh, no, George, really, my dear old friend, you can't get away like that. Roddy Martindale simply wouldn't let you. It's months and months since we last had a gin wax. Ah, let me buy you a little aperitif, and then let me take you to dinner. Allow me that privilege. Honor me, George. I can tell by the look of you that no one else has claimed you tonight. Oh, it's kind of you, it's but... It's my uh... role in life, George. We all need to be good at something. <laughs> well, we mustn't forget Jebedee. Wasn't he your old tutor? Yes, once upon a time. How do you rate Spark, the one who came from the School of Oriental Languages? Place him in the batting order, George. Not quite there. Had trouble with his nerves, so they say. What a pity. All dead and gone now, of course, properly appreciated by only a select few like you and me. You flatter me. Now, George, let's talk about your old boss, Control. The only head of the circus who ever kept his name a secret. Shall we talk about Control? If you insist. Of course, it wasn't a secret to you, was it, George? She never had any secrets from you, his tried and trusted right hand, did he? I don't know. That's the point about secrets. Closest thieves, Control and Smiley wear, right to the end, so they say. They are very complimentary. Now, don't flirt, George. I'm an old trooper. You and Control were just like that. That's why you were thrown out. It's why Bill Hayden's got your job. It's why Percy Alleline got into Control's chair when it ought to be you. Why, Bill Hayden's his cupbearer, and you're out altogether. If you say so, Roddy. I do. I say more than that. Far more. I say this. Control never died at all. He's been seen. In South Africa. Now, we can't blame a man for wanting a bit of peace in the evening of his life. Willie and Arthur walked straight into him in Joburg Airport in the waiting room. 
not a ghost. Flesh. That's the most idiotic story I've ever heard. Control died of a heart attack after a long illness, through most of which he continued to work. Besides, he hated South Africa. He hated everywhere except Surrey, the circus, and Lord's Cricket Ground. Yes, of course. William Duarte was always the most god-awful liar. I've said the same myself. Willie, you should be ashamed of yourself. I, um, suppose what put the last nail into Control's coffin was the Checo scandal. The poor devil that got shot in the back. The one who was so thick with Bill Hayden. With his picture in the newspapers under some fictitious name. But we know his real name, don't we? Jim Prito. Somehow, I don't think I can ever quite believe in Percy Alleline as chief, can you? Might be just my natural cynicism. But power sits poorly on those we've grown up with, doesn't it? And there are so few who can carry it off for me nowadays. And poor Percy's such an obvious fellow. Especially after Control, who's a positive serpent. How can anyone take Alleline seriously? Oh, that heavy good fellowship. One has only got to think of him in the old days, lolling in the bar of the travellers, sucking away on that log of a pipe, and buying drinks for all the moguls. Oh, <laughs> really? One does like one's perfidy to be subtle, don't you agree? Oh, what's his knack, George? Living off the wits of his subordinates, am I right? Really, Roddy, I can't help you. I never knew Percy as a force, you see. Only as a striver. Right. With his eyes on Control's purple, day and night. Yes, well, now he's actually wearing it, and the mob loves him. So who's doing the business for him? Eh, hey, George? Who is it? I cannot help you. Who's the clever boots? Well, not Percy, that's for sure. And don't tell me the Americans have started trusting us again, because they'd never fall for Percy. Roddy, please stop this. Wonderfully well he's doing. We hear it from all sides. Little committees popping up with funny names. Red carpet for Percy wherever he goes. Tripping the light fantastic along the Whitehall corridors. You're out of my depth, truly. So who's earning him his reputation? Uh, no, thank you. I, I think we've finished now. It's my party, George. I'll get the bill when I'm ready. So who's pulling the strings for Percy Puppet? How about dashing Bill Hayden, your old rival? In every sense, I'm told. Of course, he never was orthodox, was he? Genius never is. All right, then. It's Roy Bland, the shop-soiled white hope. The first red brick don to make the circus. And if it's neither of them, and Control is really dead, then there's only one possibility left. It's someone who's pretending to be in retirement. You, George. Admit it. You featherhead, Martindale, you pompous, bogus, gossiping old featherhead. Roy Bland is not Red Brick. He was at St Anthony's College, Oxford. Now, don't be silly, dear. Of course St Anthony is Red Brick. It doesn't make the slightest difference there's a bit of sandstone in the same street. Just because he was your protégé. I suppose he's Bill Hayden's boy now. Well, Bill was father to them all, wasn't he? Or something like that. It's not mine, thank you. I hope you're not going to tip him. It's a guinea at Christmas. Anyway, it's my party. Draws them like bees to a honeypot, doesn't he, our Bill? Good night, Roddy. You fancy a nightcap? Start afresh with a bubbly? Why not, George? I think I will. Of course, Bill's got the glamour, hasn't he? Not like some of us. Star quality, I call it. One of the very few. I'm told the women literally bow down before him. If that's what women do. Good night. Love to Anne. Everybody's love to Anne.
lots of sandstone, shop soil, white hope. Everybody's loved to Anne. Oh, damn. Peter? I'd leave that coat on if I were you, George. We've got a long way to go. Well, you're not me, Peter. And before I go anywhere at all, I shall change out of my sopping shoes. And also, I think, make a pot of coffee. You sound a little testy, George, old boy. Lacon is waiting for you. Me, Peter? George, I've been sent to deliver you. I've been reviewing my situation in the last half hour of hell and I've come to a very grave decision. After a lifetime of living by my wits and on my memory, I shall give myself up full time to the profession of forgetting. I'm going to put an end to some emotional attachments which have long outlived their purpose, namely the circus, this house, my whole past. I shall sell up and buy a cottage in the Cotswolds, I think. Steeple Aston sounds about right. Do I need overnight things? I'm not taking any. And there I shall establish myself as a mild eccentric. Discursive, withdrawn, but possessing one or two lovable habits, such as muttering to myself as I bumble along innocent pavements. I shall become an oak of my own generation. You make the coffee. You know where everything is. You can even pick my front door locks. Clever, Peter Gray. I saw you parking this toy in Curzon Street this afternoon. I ran away immediately. Good guess on your part. What made you think I was looking for you? I hoped you went. However, you found me eventually. You had to come home sometime. It's far too young for you, Peter. It's quick. I'm surprised you didn't get thrown out with the rest of us. You had all the qualifications for dismissal. Good at your work. Loyal, discreet. What happened tonight, George? How's Anne? 
Roddy Martindale happened tonight. Why do I permit it? I tell myself it's for politeness sake. It's not. It's weakness. And the fact that I have nothing better to do. My wife's fine. They put me in charge of scalp hunters. You are Jim Prido's successor. You, looking after the heavy one. Why not? Tucked away at downtown Brixton, behind the broken glass and the barbed wire, dispatching the thugs occasionally. Kept a good arm's length from the circus ringmasters. How is Jim, do you know? In quarantine. I don't mean to pry, I merely ask. Can he get around? Can he walk and so on? Bad backs can be terribly tricky, I believe. The word is he manages pretty well. He's back in England. Address unknown. Travel. Is that still the scalp hunter's official name? Hit and run, caution carry. Sorry. Our control always preached that good intelligence work is gradual and rests on a kind of gentleness. It's not my department. No. Well, the scalp hunters were always the exception control allowed to his own rule. On Bill Hayden's persuasion, a reflection of Bill's temperament, of course. The solo initiative. Very dashing. Very audacious. Sorry, Peter, what? Lateralism. I said, are you familiar with the word? I most certainly am not. It's the in doctrine now. We used to go up and down. Now we go along. What's that supposed to mean? In your day, the circus ran itself by regions. Africa, satellites, Russia, China, Southeast Asia, West Indies, you name it. Each region was commanded by its own juju man. Control sat in heaven and held the strings, remember? It strikes a distant chord. Well, today everything operational is under one hat. It's called London Station. Regions are out, lateralism is in. Who's station commander? Bill Hayden. His number two is Roy Bland. Toby Esterhazy runs between them like a poodle. They're a service within the service. Share their own secrets and don't mix with the pros. There are three of them and Alaline. That's right. The object of it all is to make us more secure. A very good idea. Why did Lacon send you for me, Peter? Do you mean why did he send me for you, or why did he send me for you? Quite right, Peter. I should have known better than to ask. You remember your last day at the circus? Just one day before control departed and the new regime took over. You stuck your head around my office door and said, Peter, I've been sacked. We went straight out and you got drunk. Why pick me, George? I was pretty low grade, running some very sketchy networks of merchant seamen out of London Dockland. Whatever, Poles, Russians, chinks I could cobble together. Why me, George? You want a reason? You fastened on the same word that night when I asked why you'd been kicked out. I'll tell you exactly what you said. And I hope this isn't going to be embarrassing. You said reason as logic or reason as motive or reason as a way of life. You said they don't have to give me reasons. I can write my own damn reasons, and that is not the same as the half-baked tolerance that comes from no longer caring. I thought that was pretty impressive stuff from a man as drunk as you were. 
At least I had the good sense not to let you drive me home. Lakin sent me for you, George. Looks like Count Dracula's blood bank. Lakon once described it to me as his Hampshire Camelot, built by a teetotal millionaire, which he seems to think explains everything. That's out of touch, Peter. Does Lakon have any particular title nowadays? Nothing new. Just Sir Oliver of the Cabinet Office, permanent watchdog of all intelligence affairs. You know how he loves being one of nature's prefects. George, hello. Thanks for coming. Come on in, will you? Willem? Hope we didn't get too advanced about George in that little dog, Willem. You've been enjoying retirement, George? You haven't missed the warmth of human contact. I rather would, I think. One's work, one's old buddies. Oh, I think I manage very well, thank you. Yes. Yes, I'm sure I do. And you, all goes well with you? Oh, no great changes, no, no, all very smooth. Charlotte got her scholarship to Rodin, which was nice. Oh, very good. Hmm. How about your wife? In the pink and so on? Very bonny, thank you. Ah, all spruce and shipshape again, Willem? You were grubby. He did look a ruffian, didn't he, George? Well, um, shall we? Oh, please, George, I wanted to talk particularly to you. All right, Paul, lock us in, please. I think you know Mr. Smiley, don't you? Yes, of course I do. Once gave me a job, Mr. Smiley. Don't you remember? Tar, sir. Ricky Tar, the lawyer's boy from Marseille. Changed my first nappies, as we used to say. They were very tough interviews he used to give us tender young recruits. Of course, 12 years ago, and uh, it's that long, Mr. Smiley. Well, you don't look any different to me, sir. No, 12 years ago, nobody but nobody got taken on unless we got past you. Not even scalp hunters. I aren't quite your type. We all had to get the nod from Mr. Smiley. Ta. Of course I remember you, Ricky. Your father was an Australian, I recall. A solicitor and a non-conformist lay preacher. Altogether a most unusual chap to pop up in Marseille. But just such odd circumstances do seem to provide us with suitable personnel. Hmm. Bad boys like Ricky. Daddy thought he could beat the sin out of me, but you knew better, didn't you, Mr. Smiley? He only beat it further in. And that's what scalp hunters are made of. Isn't that right, Mr. Gwillem? We're waiting for you, Tar. Yes, I do think we ought to get on. Well, I guess I'd better make my pitch then. Let's keep it precise, shall we? All the way along. Before you begin, Ricky, do I understand correctly that no one at the circus knows you're in England? Only Mr. Gwillem. You're officially absent without leave. On the wanted list. I think I'm safe now. I've got a story to tell you. It's all about spies. And if it's true, which I think it is, you boys are going to need a whole new organization, right? Shall I start with the day you sent me to Lisbon? Changed my life. You might find it's going to change all your life. 